Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back once again to another episode of The Art of Photography. Today we're talking about the twin lens reflex camera and we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, historical camera stuff today. And I wanted to talk about the TLR or the twin lens reflex a little bit. It's an older design camera. Um, most of these cameras, uh, there are a few being made today, but mostly when you're talking about TLRs, you're talking about older cameras. This is a, a Rolleiflex that I have that was actually made in the 50s that we're going to we're going to like look at today. Um, but essentially, uh, these are older cameras. A lot of you are used to shooting on, like especially a modern term, is a DSLR or a digital single lens reflex camera. And basically what that means is when you know, you're looking through the shutter of the camera, it's got a mirror system in there and there's a single lens and the reflex refers to how the viewfinder works and how you're able to look through that lens. The twin lens reflex is a lot different in design. Uh, it features two lenses, uh, two, they call these objective lenses because each one of them serves a purpose. Uh, they are perfectly aligned from the side and the top lens is typically referred to as the viewing lens. The bottom lens is typically referred to as the taking lens. And basically what goes on is when you open the lid of this, um, and I'll, we'll zoom in, in a second so you can look down in it, but essentially the viewing lens, there's a diagonal mirror in here and you're basically looking through the viewing lens. Because it is perfectly in line with the taking lens, you're able to focus um, the entire lens mechanism and essentially without having to open the shutter, which is actually in the lens, it's a leaf shutter in this case, um, you can focus and, and make your images that way. Um, for a long time, you know, for me, when I started out, this was a very affordable option for a medium format camera, um, particularly this Roly, and I've got some others too that I will show you. Um, and so they really worked well for me, and you have to trick them out, and that's what we'll talk about in a minute, uh, if you want to do things like macro or close up um, and such. Um, but essentially, these are really uh, quite interesting cameras, and for me, um, a while back last summer, we did an episode kind of, we just pulled some stuff out of the camera collection collection of weird objects that I have. And one thing, I mean, for me, it's like there's the, this golden age of lens design that really kind of started manifesting itself in the 50s, really the 40s and 50s, um, where the Zeiss Tessar was used, the Zeiss Planar, and they depend on how many elements you have in the lens. Uh, but all of them, for the most part, take really sharp images. And they're all very similar designs from that era. And you really can't go wrong with those lenses. I've even shot, you know, I shoot mostly black and white with this, uh, but I've shot color slide film on here and it works great. Uh, there's no built-in meter on this particular camera, so you have to use an external meter. Uh, but anyway, what I want to do is we're going to move over to the uh, table here. I want to do some close-ups with this camera and kind of talk about how it works and some of the things you can do with it. Uh, before we do that, I do want to do a quick Audible sponsor announcement here. Um, Audible sponsored our uh, first episode a couple, two weeks ago, and uh, today they are our sponsor again. And I want to recommend another Audible book uh, because Audible has a wonderful offer for all of the Art of Photography viewers, where basically you can go get a free audio book if you try their service. And uh, basically, if you don't want to do the service and actually subscribe to Audible, you can cancel and the book is yours to keep. And so one of the things I talked about with Audible was, was actually recommending books on here. And they actually have some cool photography books in there. Uh, I, re I recommended a Seth Godin book last time we did an episode. And this time I'm going to recommend a novel, actually, which is a little bit of a departure from what we've done here in the past. Uh, but I think it's one that you probably would like, especially if you're a, a photo geek. And the book that I'm going to recommend is actually called The Mercury. Mercury Visions of Louis Daguerre by an author named Dominique Smith, who's a Texas author, I found out, so he lives down the street from me. Um, and the Mercury Visions of Louis Daguerre is a really interesting fictional novel, hypothetically. Um, Louis Daguerre, if you're not familiar with him, was one of, really considered to be one of the forefathers of, of modern photography and process. He was one of the inventors of, of chemical process to capture an image, uh, you know, long the same time that Fox Talbot was doing his thing. And, you know, he's uh, historically named the, the process was the daguerreotype. And anyway, the story of the Mercury Visions of Louis Daguerre is about Louis Daguerre in the later stages of his life where he succumbs to mercury poisoning and becomes delusional. And the story is that basically he starts having these visions of, of what he calls his 10 doomsday images that he must go capture before he dies. And of course, he's going mad the whole time. And one of these visions it's, uh, involves a little bit of romance. He, uh, he wants to photograph this woman that he's madly in love with but hasn't seen in 50 years. Anyway, it's a really interesting book. Um, the narrative narration is pretty good. Uh, it's outstanding. It's got really good reviews as well. But you could try this book for free if you like. There's holidays coming up. Maybe you got some downtime and listening to books is an excellent way to make a commute easier and um, 
you know, hang out and, and, and do other things while you read or listen in this case. So anyway, if you want to go get your free book uh, and try the service out, uh, and like I said, if you want to cancel, the book is yours to keep, but you can do that if you use our offer URL, and I will put this in the show notes below or wherever you're watching the podcast. And that URL is uh, audiblepodcast.com slash AOP. So that's audiblepodcast.com slash AOP. I'm going to put that below too. Art of Photography is what AOP stands for in case you didn't get that. But anyway, moving along, let's talk more about TLRs. Come on over to the bench and let's have a look at what these do. So these are three uh, TLR or twin lens reflex cameras that I'm going to show you. This is the one I was just holding. This is the Roloflex. And like I said, this one, this is a Roloflex MX EVS is the model name. And I'll put that in the show notes. Um, it's my favorite of the Roloflex line for the money, uh, I think for a variety of reasons. The problem that you're going to get into with some of these cameras, particularly with Roloflex, is that some of the models are now collector's items uh, due to rarity or due to popularity, uh, you know, kind of a place in time. And so the prices on those can get very high and you're paying collector prices and not shooter prices. Um, also due to the age, you also have to figure if you're actually going to buy one of these, you need to factor in um, to get it serviced. Uh, these things, when you open them up inside, they're like a Swiss watch. Uh, it's it's amazing the amount of craftsmanship and parts that went into these. And just, you know, they, they normally are pretty durable, but if it hasn't been shot in a while or it's been sitting in someone's attic or depending on if you buy one used, um, they can require some servicing on there. So you might want to get a CLA, you know, um, but there are people who will do those for you. Anyway, it's well worth the money. It usually costs, you know, um, oh, it's hard to say anywhere from $100 to $200 and up, depending on what the camera is and how rare it is and if there's any repairs that need to be made. But that's one thing that you can look at. But anyway, this is the Rollflex. This is uh, built in the 50s. The two other examples I have here, and I'll kind of go through and show you each one of these. This is an American twin lens reflex. The Rollflex was a German model. Um, the American one was the Ansco um, automatic reflex, which is a very interesting camera. I'll come back to that in a second. And then finally, this is a Flexoret, which is another amazing camera, especially for the price. And uh, the Flexorets were, were made in Czechoslovakia up until probably the 90s. I'm guessing at that, so hold, don't hold me to it. Um, but the quality kind of is all over the place on these. I have a, a pretty decent one, but I've known people who've bought these and the lenses fall out. And But I will say, <laughs> yeah, as complex as the shutter system is in here and the focus and all that, uh, this is one of the sharpest cameras I've ever owned. Uh, it's got an amazing lens on it. Uh, if you're going for extreme detail, if you're shooting landscapes or anything where you want a lot of sharpness and, and a lot of really nice detail, the Flexoray is an excellent option for something like that. Uh, it's a little more dim in the viewfinder. All these kind of are plagued with little issues here. The Rollflex is probably the, the cleanest of the lot. Um, but anyway, having said that, uh, you know, a TLR basically, it's very simple in design. On the, uh, on the left hand side here, you do have your focusing and you can see when I focus, I move the entire focal shutter or the focal plane with both lenses in, in and out. And so that basically gets you in focus. When you're looking through the viewfinder, you're going to be looking through the viewing lens and uh, that's how you focus. And it also has a built in mirror so if you're trying to uh, if your eyes are not uh, adjusting to the light correctly or something you need to zoom in on the picture uh, the mirror can help you get in focus and also the, these had a, an interesting uh, mechanism on here for, for actually just shooting um, you know when you go out to shoot uh, I can't remember what they, they call this mode, but basically it's a mode where this becomes the viewfinder and you're able to come out. This is kind of the sports mode, I think they call it, uh, if you need to focus in a hurry and shoot. Um, the camera is fully ma uh, manual, so you know, you're not going to be using a, um, a light meter that's built in. So you're going to have to meter your shot and then uh, set your aperture and your, uh, your shutter speed accordingly. Uh, it does have um, an MX sync flash, which basically there's two modes in here. There's an M mode and an X mode. The M is now obsolete. This was an earlier mode uh, for using flash bulbs or flash cubes, if you remember those. And they were really bright and the optimal brightness would be just a little bit after the uh, shutter was fired. So what it does is it fires the shutter and it syncs up the flash just before that's done so you don't overexpose. It's obsolete, don't worry about using it anymore. I just shot a bunch of pictures recently where I had it in the M mode and they all came out too dark. Uh, the X mode is shutter sync and it will sync at every speed. So the top speed on this camera is a 500th of a second, which is way faster than um, just about any DSLR or SLR camera um, that I know of can do. So anyway, it's pretty interesting. Um, what's interesting is the Rolleiflex, um, in the, during World War II, the U.S., these were not imported uh, for obvious reasons. And an American company, ANSCO, which 
technically has German roots, uh, sprung up and they built these Ansco automatic re reflex cameras. It is a tank, it is extremely heavy, but it is probably the most well-built of any of the American TLRs. Um, there's a couple others, there's Graflex, um, there's Seraflex, things like that. They like flex in the name. And this one's extremely interesting. It's got two kind of, uh, the, the, the right switch here cocks the shutter and then you fire with the left hand. It's got, uh, you know, a fine focus here on the front as well as a focusing knob over here on the side, which is pretty amazing. Uh, mechanically, it's kind of a beast. Uh, it's very complex and when these break, they're very hard to get fixed. Uh, it's, it ends up being more of a affordable collector's item, I should say, but a very cool camera just the same. And like I said, the last option is the Flexorette um, that I'm showing you here. They're, they're way more TLRs than what I'm showing you, so I could, shouldn't call them options. Uh, but the Flexorette is amazing too. It's got a, a mirror inside and, and also has the, um, um, you can flip over the uh, little magnifying glass so if you need focusing assistance uh, which is really nice um, again very over complicated in the way the whole shutter works these are all leaf shutters so they'll sync flash at any speed but like I said I think my favorite of these just in terms of sharpness is definitely the flex red it's not nearly as smooth as butter and easy to use as the roll flex but uh, but it certainly does the trick and does it very well so anyway those are those are the three the three of my favorite cameras that I've used and I'll show some images from these two um, one thing that I like to do typically is do things that cameras aren't supposed to do a lot of times. And so, you know, when I first got into doing sharper medium format photography like this, I would take my Rolleiflex out and they're great for landscapes. They're awesome for night shooting. They have a bulb setting. You can pop your, uh, your shutter release in there and, and you can do really nice shots. And I've gotten some really cool shots with time exposure. Um, it's also interesting when you go out with these, they're instant conversation pieces because they just look like antique cameras and people always have questions and want to know about them and they're kind of fun in that regard. If you're trying to stay stealth, uh, it's not a real <laughs> stealth camera to take out because people will ask you about it, which is you know kind of fun. But anyway, uh, but I've gotten excellent shots. I've done a lot of night shooting. And the other thing that I started doing with these, um, and it was just simply at the time I didn't have a better camera and I wanted to do some macros doing still lifes. So the closest focusing distance on this is probably a couple feet at least. And that's the, the close, the, for the closest you can possibly get something in focus with. Uh, you can manipulate f-stop a little bit for that, but uh, but one thing I started doing was they actually do make filters for these, but the problem inherently you have with most TLRs, and I say most because there's a few that, that, that get around it, um, but because the lenses and the way they're situated, if I'm shooting something that's really close, you can see that there's a parallax problem here. I'm going to get it focused up and composed with the taking lens and you can see it's going to be too high for the excuse me for the viewing lens it's going to be too high for the taking lens and so literally what I was doing was I was hanging close-up filters on here and I would use a tripod and just raise it up I'd figure out it was just you know about an inch and a half um, and and do it that way it's a little bit of a crapshoot but you can still get some amazing photos you have to make sure that your distance doesn't change and again sometimes you do run into problems but you know if you're uh, somewhat industrious you can force these into doing interesting things uh, that they're not really made to do, which is kind of fun. So those are a few examples of twin lens reflex cameras. Uh, check them out. Um, like I said, you can find these. I mean, pretty much you're, you're looking at buying them used. Roloflex, believe it or not, still makes cameras new. Uh, they are very expensive. Um, it, I'll be them still cool. Uh, to buy one new usually costs a fortune, but the used market on these is really nice. Um, and like I said, there's other cameras other than Roloflex that you can look at too. Uh, but they could usually, I think the bang for the buck you get on these is pretty high. And like I said, when I was kind of starting out and and jumping into medium format photography you know I was shooting whole gun stuff like that and I really wanted to start concentrating on getting really sharp images and and, and doing more uh, with the actual image quality that was uh, you know being captured the stuff I was doing and twin lens reflex cameras are a really excellent option for something like that so check them out um, I'll put some links below in the show notes and uh, we'll see you next time once again this has been the art of photography thanks for watching